Anime, am I actually the strongest? Continuing to episode 2, Hart was relaxing on his bed. Lately, Gordo seemed busy, so he didn't need to practice sword techniques. Suddenly, Hart heard a commotion outside. He tried to see the situation outside using his protective magic projection. Near the fortress gate, many of his father's soldiers were severely injured. Gordo himself was fine but felt very frustrated. Hart went there and met his father. Gordo said he had been busy lately because there had been frequent bandit attacks in the area. After obtaining the information, Gordo and his troops headed to the bandits' headquarters. However, their troops were suddenly attacked from behind. Despite being alert and fully prepared, they were taken by surprise. Hart's face turned angry upon hearing Gordo's story. Flay was also there, mocking the soldiers for losing to lowly bandits. Hart immediately told her to be quiet, and Flay backed off. While walking towards his residence, Hart secretly predicted protective magic that could heal wounds. The soldiers were puzzled as to why their injuries healed on their own. That night, Hart was already asleep in his bed, and for some reason, Flay was still standing in front of his room door. When Hart woke up and wanted to leave the room, he was surprised to see Flay there. Even when asked, Flay didn't say anything. Hart remembered that earlier he had ordered Flay to stay quiet because he was angry. Perhaps that's why Flay was acting this way. Hart felt guilty and allowed Flay to speak again. After that, Hart wanted to go out tonight, and he asked Flay to accompany him. Hart used his projection to search for the bandits who attacked his father's soldiers. Hart found a group of bandits, but among them, he saw some soldiers as well. Hart and Flay suspected that the enemy had information about Gordo's troops. In other words, they had spies. Without much thought, Hart decided to eliminate them completely. From inside the residence, Hart and Flay were unaware that Char was looking out the window. Meanwhile, at the bandits' headquarters, it turned out there were indeed some soldiers who had betrayed their own side. They were pleased to see Gordo running away from the battle. Their next plan was to eliminate Gordo. Unbeknownst to them, Hart and Flay overheard their conversation. They panicked because there was a sudden intruder. As they tried to draw their weapons, Hart immobilized them with his protective magic. Hart intended to interrogate them, and it seemed they had no other choice after witnessing his terrifying face and abilities. Hart obtained some interesting information. The bandits who attacked were actually Imperial soldiers from a neighboring country in disguise. They infiltrated the kingdom to create chaos, they claimed to have an accomplice who helped them overcome the border security. However, they themselves didn't know much about this accomplice. Hart was surprised because such a thing could only be done with authority surpassing that of Gordo. It could be that someone in this kingdom was targeting Gordo's life. After answering Hart's questions, the spies pleaded for forgiveness and promised not to be involved in this matter again. However, Hart instructed Flay to burn down their entire headquarters instead. And so, the fortress they used as their base turned into a sea of fire. For now, Hart planned to inform Gordo about this information through an anonymous letter. The next day, Gordo received the anonymous letter. Gordo's troops confirmed that the mentioned fortress had been completely burned down, and they also managed to capture some bandits at the location. Initially, Gordo suspected that they were not ordinary bandits, but he didn't expect them to be involved with the Empire. Char was also with Gordo and heard all the news. Char asked who had exterminated those wicked people. It was not certain, but considering the skill and brutality displayed, only one person came to mind when it came to discussing powerful fire magic. Who else but Flay? Gordo even admitted that Flay had abilities surpassing his own. Sometimes, Flay also patrolled to control the demon race in this area. Gordo speculated that Flay coincidentally encountered the bandits while on patrol. Char immediately remembered something and asked for permission to leave. Char wanted to find out more about her sibling. She went straight to Flay to inquire. She wanted to know if there were two of her siblings. Char recounted that last night she saw shadows that looked like Hart and Flay flying in the middle of the night. However, Char was certain that her sibling couldn't use flying magic. Therefore, Char decided to go to her sibling's room to make sure. There, she found her sibling sleeping, but Char didn't sense the usual frightening aura. Flay instantly felt proud of her master's power. She explained that the intimidating aura was evidence of Hart's extraordinary magical strength. Since infancy, his power had been incredibly formidable. Even as a demon, Flay couldn't reach that level. Char then asked about Hart's true identity. However, Flay didn't want to tell her. 
Although when Hart once claimed to be the Demon King, he was just speaking casually at that time. In the afternoon, Flay told Hart about her conversation with Char. They spoke telepathically using protective magic to avoid being overheard by others. Hart decided to create a surveillance spell. He also set it up to emit a warning sound whenever Char was in a certain location or engaged in something dangerous. At night, Hart intentionally left his room to lure Char. He pretended to go to the bathroom. Char followed Hart from behind at a not too distant distance. Then, Hart gathered his courage to turn around and ask her something. Char immediately ran and hid again. Even while bathing, Hart didn't suspect that his sister was secretly spying on him, although in reality, Char was clearly visible. The following day was the same, Char continued to follow and observe Hart from behind. Even when he practiced swordsmanship, read books, bathed with Gordo, and during all his other activities. This went on for seven days. Then, during a family meal, Gordo informed them that Natalia and Char would be going out. They were going to attend an annual festival. Usually, Gordo would accompany them, but this time he asked the two of them to go instead. Meanwhile, Char continued to gaze at Hart. In the afternoon, Hart received a warning sound from the surveillance spell he had placed on Char. In the forest, Natalia and Char were ambushed by a group of bandits. The guards were overwhelmed trying to fend off the bandits. Natalia managed to find an opportunity to escape. She carried Char with her. Suddenly, a protective magic appeared in Char's ear, indicating the direction to flee. Natalia herself was puzzled about how someone could give instructions to Char. Natalia reached the edge of a cliff, and Char said there was a hiding place below. Reluctantly, Natalia had to jump down to avoid being captured by the bandits. Fortunately, Natalia used her magic to minimize the impact of the fall. They finally arrived in a dark cave. Natalia said she wanted to meet the person who had given Char instructions. Although she didn't know the person's identity, Natalia believed they were a defender of truth. Char asked what a defender of truth was. Natalia explained that this figure was someone who punished criminals. Natalia intended to go outside and told Char to stay there. As she left, the mouth of the hiding place suddenly vanished and turned into a stone. However, she could still pass through the stone. It seemed to be an illusion spell. Unaware that the bandits had managed to find her, Natalia was not going to allow herself to become their captive. She unsheathed the knife she had and aimed it at her own throat. She felt it was better to die than to be a prisoner. Suddenly, the knife Natalia held shattered into pieces. It was actually Hart's doing. He also made Natalia temporarily unconscious to prevent her from being discovered. Witnessing all of this, Hart became incredibly angry. He unleashed his wrath upon all the bandits in front of him. After successfully securing their mother, Hart brought her inside the cave. He altered his voice to sound like someone else, but Char couldn't be fooled. She felt the intimidating aura emanating from him similar to Hart's aura. Char gathered the courage to turn around and call out to her brother. Surprisingly, Hart spontaneously responded when she called out to him. Char asked if he was the defender of truth who punished evil people. Hart didn't know how to answer, so he went along with it for now. He confessed that he was indeed a defender of truth. Char became excited upon hearing this and felt guilty for misunderstanding her brother all this time. Hart only asked her to keep it a secret for now. After that, Hart bid farewell and went outside to take care of the remaining enemies. Later that night, Hart returned home early and instructed Flay to pick up Natalia and Char, so they wouldn't suspect that he was the one who saved them. Gordo's subordinates also reported that the injured guards miraculously healed themselves, just like the other day. Gordo wanted to express his gratitude to the person who helped him, but he had no idea about their identity. Hart mentioned that the person would surely come again when the Imperial soldiers disguised as bandits returned. Gordo immediately asked how Hart knew that the bandits were actually Imperial soldiers. Hart made up a reason, saying that it was the most likely scenario if they were targeting Natalia and Char. A while later, Flay returned with Natalia and Char. Unexpectedly, Char suddenly hugged Hart with joy. Gordo and Natalia were also surprised to see them becoming close all of a sudden. Char simply stated that she had fallen in love with her brother. Flay felt jealous seeing someone else getting close to Hart. This is the end of episode 2. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss part 3 of this series recap.